Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, welcome back. It's the Awesome Cast 205. Mike Sorg here from the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, the Mayhem Studios, Mayhem Central. Uh, ready to talk tech, talk geeky um, with a great cast of guests today. Again, back with us as usual, John Chichilla coming to us from his home base, from Chilla Central, if you will. Ch- yeah, the, the Chilla Underground. The Chilla Underground. Actually, I'm well above ground. I'm on the yeah, it looks floor. very light in there. Well, we, we, can, we can pretend. I think you, you got a view up there, don't you? Yeah, I can see all the way into the city. We're up, we're up a little bit higher than Mount Washington. No, nobody knows on audio. Nobody knows. Yeah. And also, a new one with us uh, today. Uh, instead of the K Dutters that we usually get on the show, we got the P Dutters. Patrick Dude is joining us. How you doing, sir? I'm doing quite well today. Thank you for having me on. Awesome, awesome. It's like, it's somebody I've been meaning on have on for a while. I was like, you know what? That's a good substitution. I, I, I think that'll work out today. Uh, he's doing some cool stuff, and we'll talk about that here shortly. But first, I want to make sure you guys uh, know where to find us. Of course, every Tuesday we're doing this show at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live, uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, you can tweet us at AwesomeCast or follow us AwesomeCast on Facebook and Google+. Or drop us a line at uh, AwesomeCast at G... I'm sorry, AwesomeCast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, and also audio, video versions up on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker as well um and and i think that's it right now and anywhere else you can find uh fine fine podcasts so uh patrick tell me you i know you do something in the tech sector here you've been at PodCamp presenting uh in the past there's videos up of that if you want to go check out the PodCamp pittsburgh um uh, youtube channel uh he's definitely featured on there uh, uh, tell us what do you do well, um, I'm currently a doctoral candidate at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, I study visualizations and social media, and I'm also doing work with actually with uh, I'm contracting with the uh, Department of Defense right now, doing social media work and visualizations for the uh, for, for the Department of Defense at this point. Awesome, some high level stuff. Yep. <laughs> that maybe we um, can... yes, some, some we intricate able... stuff, you know, things of that nature. But it's for the most part, it's very um it's been a worthwhile experience kind of learning what they're doing in terms of social media and uh going to the gatherings that's going on within the government in terms of what they're trying to collect in terms of social media and how how to help them with get, collecting that type of information and getting it out there to them awesome awesome i'm glad to have you join us here um so and you got something you want to talk about for an awesome thing uh what do you got Yes, um, my awesome thing for today would be um, it's a wonderful visualization package that I usually do a lot of um, promotions within Pittsburgh because I, I, uh, I run the meetup group here in uh, Pittsburgh for data visualizations and I talk about um, this package called D3. Um, it's D is in Dudas. Um, D3. Um, it's uh, document data document uh, driven data driven documents. Um, is sort of the D3 motto, and it's a wonderful package if you're interested in terms of learning how to do visualizations and getting them online um, and taking your data to that next level in terms of uh, from a static flat file or a database in terms of making it into a visualization. It's a wonderful, wonderful package in that regard. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, I mean, th- this, I mean, this is like not just making sure, you know, you know, the rest of us Luddites know exactly what's going on. Like this is some, this is some high level stuff you guys are doing. Uh, with the government? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, well, we look in terms of social media in, in various parts of the, the world, uh, Philippines, Syria, Syria, Turkey, um, things of that nature, you know, we're trying to figure out, um, military intelligence and we're trying to figure out more likely like real-time information so mm-hmm. if we're interested in trying to see if um, a platoon is entering a certain sector of the world are they getting met with positive responses or negative responses in terms of what's on the ground there or um, is there information that's out there right now um, YouTube has been a huge um, sort of a area for us to collect information because a lot of people like to put 
videos out there and collect being able to collect that information and get it to the right people is, is sort of a wonderful asset for us so um we're trying to venture out there in terms of social media and it's been like i said it's been a sort of an interesting time right now in terms of learning what the government's interested in mm -hmm. and how to apply that to make sure that people you know are you know people are safe and we can we can help in that regards i know i know i attended a session uh i want to say about a year ago with somebody from google talking about a lot of data collection uh uh you know and, and inter interpretation and being able to react to that definitely in like third world countries and everything it's really fascinating what they can do uh, with all this, with with just like tools that are out there, you know, uh, infrastructures that, that Twitter and Google and all these guys have built and Facebook even, right? Um, I know, for instance, uh, one of the stories uh, that's come up this week is Facebook actually was using uh, their posts and, and giving sad ones to a certain section of people and happy ones to a certain section of people and see how it affects. Oh, no, he's shaking his head at that one. <laughs> yeah. I think this has probably come up in your circles as well, right? Um, in the academic world, yes, it's been a huge issue. Um, it's in terms of Facebook, how, um, and the issue does not actually reside with Facebook in that regard. No. Um, people, not even the authors involved with the project. It's, um, whenever you do something, uh, that type of research, you know, being in academia, like I am, you know, that you have a situation where you have uh, a sector that sort of handles, um, this information, like. If there's a thing called the IRB, um, which takes care of, you know, you, you make sure that before you do a project or a research study, um, you talk to them first and they approved it. So you can't really be mad at Facebook in that regards, considering, you know, there was, a, you know, their major university that was out there that said this was an OK idea. Let's go with it, um, even though I don't think it should have been approved in any way, shape or form. Oh, no. Yes. No. It's been crazy. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, great. So go check that out. And the meetup group, if people want to go check that out, it is at? It is at uh, meetup.com um, slash Pittsburgh data visualization group. Yep. And uh, we'll be sure to tweet a, a link out from the uh, Awesome Cast account as well. Uh, so, uh, or just usually meet up, just search uh, Pittsburgh Vis data visualization visualization group and you'll be all right there uh in most cases uh, do, you, do you mind if i kind of do a little small plug for it real, real no, quick go here? for it go for it i i have i'm also with the university of pittsburgh I, I also teach there as well i love i've loved teaching for a number of years now um if you're interested in visualizations please check it out you know i put a lot of work into, into these presentations and i work with other groups um, even like groups like IBM and stuff like that. I'm trying to get them involved with this process. So if you're in the Pittsburgh area and you're interested in doing data visualizations at all, please check it out. Um, we haven't met. We don't, we're not going to be doing any meetups until next until September um, due to my scheduling conflicts and whatnot going on over the next month or so. So, but uh, once September rolls around, we're going to have a great group of uh, people coming out to talk about visualizations and how to get started with that. Awesome, awesome. Go check that out, guys. I, I actually just join the group to make sure I'm updated on what's going on. Uh, I'd, I'd love to see some of those presentations. Um, awesome. Uh, Chilla, you got something this week. So yeah, going back to the, the, the stomping grounds of uh, home automation, um, GE is going to be shipping the GE link, which is a, a light bulb that's actually affordable. Um, they're going to run between 15 and $25 a pop. Um, and they do, you do have to get a hub to control those. They're going to sell a kit that includes two of the light bulbs and the hub for 50 bucks. So when you think about like the Hue, I think that runs like what, 199, 299 or something like that. I think it's 299 um, for the hub and I think three light bulbs. So uh, to me, this is, this is an opportunity for a lot of people to get in at the ground floor of, of controlling their, their lights around their house. Um, the one thing is obviously, um, you're by going to the lower price, you are giving up some technology. So they are just your basic white lights, mm -hmm. um, but they can be controlled via an app and the hub. Um, I think Hugh or Philips is set to actually release a, a more cost appropriate uh, device at, at $40 for the Lux model. Um, I'm kind of holding off on the whole technology until someone creates or, or once the Apple standard 
comes out and, and they officially say what they're going to support. They had those first couple companies at their keynote. Um, but I, obviously, I think there's going to be a lot more companies that get involved in that. I'm also hearing about, and I think you, you tweeted out um, a, a tweet about, a, I can't remember what the company was now. Um, but some, some companies are making a hub that will actually interact with a multitude of brand devices. I think that's more the route I want to go because I don't think there's one company today that does it all as far as like a light switch, a device that goes in between something like your lamp and the light socket or the, um, the plug in the wall so you can kind of control any device. Um, things like the Nest for, for controlling uh, temperature and, and things in the um, heat and air conditioning around your house. Um, I'm looking for that that where I can kind of piece it together with the the best of breed across all the platforms. I, I look forward to someone coming up with a, a one size fits all. Our product beats everyone else hands down. That's also affordable. Um, the one thing to note on the GE light bulb is um, they're taking pre-orders. Um, Home Home Depot is actually taking the pre-order. The bulbs don't ship until the fall. Hmm. Now, I don't know if that's something where they're going to make sure that they work with HomeKit or if it's something along those lines or it's just they're in manufacturing or there's a part that's not available right now. I, I don't know why they're not shipping, but I don't know. I think this is something worth it if you just wanted, even if you simply wanted to be able to control the light bulb, let's just say on your front porch and back porch for when you when you get home, or one light bulb inside in your back porch coming in from the car. That that's the one thing that I notice is that I I, I have some motion sensors set up and then lights will automatically turn on when arriving. Um, gives a little bit of extra safety to people inside their homes. Um, it can freak you out if, if an animal runs across the yard because then all the uh, certain lights will come on. Um, and obviously you can set them to turn off after a period of time and cue it up based on sunrise and sunset. Um, but I don't know, I, I, I like the lighting aspect of the home automation actually the most, more than the Nest or, uh, when I'm, or the Nest Protect, things of that nature. I, I look at the, the lighting to be one of my my the, the bigger things that i pay attention to mm -hmm. i like that it's, it's something affordable and something easy like i i don't think i'm so interested in you know mood lighting you know mm -hmm. so much as i just want something that will you know be able to time be able to you know have these functions like you know you know it looks like it's controlled by the iphone uh put the timer in there um i think it's a perfect it's, starting point for i think most people at this point it's, some people have come up with like very elaborate if this then that recipes where yes. if they check into a certain movie it, that they're watching that they watch at home then it automatically sets the lighting to synchronize with the scenes in the movie it, it's just very ridiculous to me I, I i simply want to feel safe when i'm either home or away or arriving or leaving as also as as to not be wasting electricity so i, I do want to uh, make as aside from that you mentioned if this and that um, um, for those who don't know, there's this uh, uh, ifttt.com where a lot of these recipes reside. I know there was something, there was an if this and that set of recipes to go to Google Glass to really add a lot of uh, uh, functionality to it that's not normally in there. Um, but if you want to go check that out and see what kind of crazy stuff you can get social networks and all kinds of services to do things, uh, go to ifttt.com, if this then that. Um, so you know, kind of follow along with that, uh, and and check it out. It's it's an awesome site. It can do some really cool things. So awesome. Um, my turn. Oh wait, first. Yeah, uh, what do you got up? Well, Wheel oh. says that he got a new phone. The LG Optimus is it one seventy or an i seventy? I think that's an i. Is it i seventy? So it'd be cooler if it was the LG Optimus Prime. Yeah. Yeah, well, that screwed me because that screwed me up because we were just talking about Transformers last podcast when I saw that. Um, but uh, I know he said it's on Cricket. I think he, I forget if he was the one who was telling me about uh, that everybody had to update since uh, they got bought out by AT and T. So definitely, yeah, they every, switched from CDMA network to a GSM network. So they're just on like the AT and T network now. So Pretty you kind of expected. That. I'm surprised it happened this quick. So, 
so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to see it in a couple of weeks there, Wheels. We'll be uh, finally heading down to RWA again. Um, so mine, you know, yesterday was social media day. A completely made up holiday by Mashable.com, but still uh, Pittsburgh celebrated in fine fashion uh, with a uh, actually the Smith Brothers Agency down there right across the street from uh, PNC Park. Um, they have an awesome meeting space. I've been to some stuff in the past that they've, they've had, uh, and I think still have, uh, from time to time, a web design day, um, where it's just a bunch of speakers talking about, like, I learned stuff about, like, UX design, um, a lot of, like, kind of workflow stuff that I still kind of apply to my own independence things, even though I don't do that much website-specific things. Um, but this one had a great keynote by, um, Constantine, I, oh, I should pull the thing up, um, uh, one of the, I think is an evangelist uh, over with Twitter LA, um, including a preview. I don't think this is out yet. Apparently, Twitter is doing a mini documentary about Twitter. So that's happening. Uh, but it, it was pretty cool because it dived into a little bit of like how the Today Show is using Twitter, for instance. Um, dived in actually at midnight was featured, who I think has been doing a tremendous job uh, with Twitter. They, they, he mentioned that every time at, at midnight is on and it comes on at midnight whatever the hashtag war which is they put up something like uh uh you know bad a bad date movie or or a wrestling but you know wrestling movie or something like that and people come up with different uh uh terms for that uh constantly daily in the top trending i think he said worldwide um maybe just us i can't recall but uh also they, they also had some great uh five minute uh presentations by you know friends of ours Ginny pit girl uh, talking about all the stuff that uh, she was able to accomplish. Uh, guys from Commonwealth Press talking about how uh, they were trying to do a beer fest on a boat and ended up uh, getting such a great reaction. They had to get two boats, for instance. Um, uh, Chris Whitlatch, we've had on the show before with the Pittsburgh Foundation, helped us with Unsung uh, a while back, did one about Day of Giving and some of the interesting things some of the, uh, uh, some of the nonprofits would do to get people you know, interested in it. Uh, to check it out. There it is. So I'm reading through the article. Where did you say it was at? Uh, left field, left field meeting space uh, up at the wow. top of Smith Smith Rose. Uh, it's nice. They got a nice patio up there. If you ever, I think Refresh Pittsburgh's there now. Uh, another great series. Well, they'll like about every month they'll do a, a series of like two presentations, and it's everything from like design to web to uh, social media. Um, I one time uh, when they, do, I don't know, do they still do the Yins Cam at Penguins games? Where they have yes. the app and it brings up the camera, so. like the, the 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 people behind that uh, did a presentation there, and they were also at PodCamp as well. Um, but it's a pretty cool space. Uh, they talked about Primani Brothers, Mikey and Big Bob were <laughs> featured on as part of their <laughs> campaign because they did that rap, um, and then which led to an interesting uh, uh, meet discussion between Primani Brothers, uh, the guy from Twitter, and Mikey and Bob last night too, uh, on on Twitter itself. So. Um, but no, all around a really cool kind of just celebration of things. You know, did really learn a lot new. It was just kind of like, look, oh, Franctuary was another one, a great hot dog place downtown uh, that I know we featured for PodCamp in the past. Um, unfortunately, they didn't record anything. Uh, there was a uh, proclamation from the mayor. He wasn't there in, in person, uh, but they, there was a proclamation about uh, social media day, all official looking. Uh, a friend of the show, Josh Steger, was actually emceeing. Those jokes, man. Those jokes were rough that, that he was putting out there. Um, so go check it out. There's actually a great article that we tweeted uh, earlier today. A nice recap from the Trib. Uh, so go look that up. It's a uh, Pittsburgh Social Media Day event. Features Twitter exec, local personalities. And uh, and it was fun. It was good representation of, of Pittsburgh. Uh, going how'd, on. You, how'd you find out about it? Randomly. I don't even know how. Um... It was tweeted or emailed. I went ahead and signed up. It was a free sign up. I did uh, hear from uh, from a friend, Josh. Uh, they had about 150 attending and about okay. 72 on a wait list. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Good turnout. They, they should, they should uh, live broadcast that. Yeah, you'd want to, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Why they not? don't for Refresh Pittsburgh or, or Web Design Day or anything. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, Pittsburgh, 
seems like with Pittsburgh, it's it, they're kind of taking it to a different level when it comes to social media. Like social media traditionally with, you know, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Um, Pittsburgh's very adamant about making the social aspect very much a part of it, like getting people together to have these kind of meetups and groups and stuff like that and just having these sort of days and whatnot um, where you're actually communicating with people in real, you know, person versus online, but uh, communicating the technology aspect of things as well. Yeah, certainly. And, and, and that, that's one of the things that I think brought everybody together, you know, previously with PodCamp. There used to be a, a blog fest meetups and everything like that. Um, it was a lot of, hey, you're the person I know from Twitter. You know, I, I, I had somebody looking around and she came up and just like looking at hashtags, trying to see if there's anybody I, I know here from Twitter, you know. Um, uh there was there's a lot of that happening. I know I know a friend Doug from Should I Drink That. Some fans came up, uh, for instance. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I got to run into a lot of faces that uh, I, I definitely talk with on Twitter uh, as well. And uh, you know, good you know, good collection of people we knew there. Um, Scott Harbaugh from WPXI. This is interesting. So Scott Harbaugh, I've heard this story before. We actually that's also on the podcast Pittsburgh site um, about when we had the the hijacker. Not the hijacker, but the hostage situation down the Gateway Center, um, and uh, as he tells it, uh, he had the earpiece in, and he's like, well, "Okay, I'm not doing the weather all morning." So he started just tweeting all the information he got from the earpiece from the reporters and everything uh, on the ground. Um, he has, I forget what the number was, but he beats out all the rest of the eleven, I think, or maybe it's seven new uh, weather casters in Pittsburgh. He's hoping. <laughs> That eventually his goal is to beat out more followers than the other three stations combined very soon. And he's on track for it. So, uh, but he's really engaging. He's really fun on there. Um, Verse from Kitty K A uh, is actually uh, very very responsive on there as well. I've seen. Um, also, uh, the there was a couple more. Uh, uh, Rachel Carlson from Yelp. Um, EPGH. I didn't know the story of EPGH. Four people that just loved restaurant, loved being foodies. The restaurant scene was growing about five years ago. They just started blogging it. Now they're doing a book and all this kind of stuff. Um, really cool story there. Uh, Pittsburgh mom, Wiggly Whiskey was represented. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, um, uh, so they're, yeah, they're doing some cool stuff there over there at Smith Brothers. And, uh, and, and like, you know, they said... You know, this was an a interesting mix of people that no, don't normally get together. Uh, so really cool to see these kinds of events happening in Pittsburgh. So, cool. Speaking of other cool things happening in Pittsburgh, we ran a story last week uh, where we went to visit Alpha Lab Gear. We got to talk with uh, the folks at Ident Identify Technologies with the drones. This week we're going 3D printers. Uh, we're going to check out this story. Dutter's talking with a couple of interns with Peacemaker uh, technologies, um, making kiosks to 3D print toys uh, that they're going to put on toy stores. They're actually on track. They're already in a toy store here in Pittsburgh and uh, on track for a few more awesome things coming out that we talk about in this interview. So go check this out. We'll be right back with a few more stories. Hi, everybody. It's Katie from Awesome Cast, and today we're at Alpha Lab Gear talking to some startups. I am now with uh, Anthony Elias, uh, an intern from Peacemaker Technology. Uh, Drew Lippold, also an intern from Peacemaker Technology. How's this going so far? Is this a little nerve-wracking? I mean, no, it's great. Uh, I love working for Peacemaker and uh, we're glad to tell everyone about it. So, You know, I mean, this is really like the first job that I come into and I just love it. Uh, being a product design intern, it's really something else. Being able to actually develop a product, see it from its basic concept sketches all the way to a finished product. It's Really an awesome thing. Do you guys go to school around here? Oh, well, I live around here. I'm like five minutes away, but I actually go to college at uh, Davidson College in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, I go to the uh, Art Institute of Pittsburgh. So, yeah. um, so what are you doing here? How did you get involved? Usually it's just Pittsburgh folks. <laughs> so um, down at Davidson, I took a 3D printing and 3D modeling class, and I decided, like, you know, I want to do it this summer. So I literally just searched for 3D printing internships in Pittsburgh because I knew I was coming home, found Peacemaker, contacted them, went through interviews, uh, and I was uh, chosen. So I'm here just doing product design uh, for our new pilot in Ju uh, July. Yeah. So where did the idea of Peacemaker come from? So... 
Arden and Alejandro, when they got into 3D printing, they, they were actually, they built their own printers. They, at first, they wanted to design printers and sell them, but they figured that actually wouldn't work as well. Mm -hmm. So from there, they decided, you know, customization is a great thing you can do with 3D printing. So let's make a kiosk, design the printers, and then make content that, you know, people can come into a store, get on the kiosk, and, you know, pick, pick what they want from the content and then customize it any way they want. What is the benefits to the stores that have your kiosks in them? Uh, the major benefit is really not even having to do inventory. Uh, you'll, they'll have to do inventory on the actual material itself, but I mean, say right now, the basic model in a store is, you know, buy whatever you think people are going to be buying, and then if it makes it, it makes it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So, and what you do with those leftovers, you know, put them on clearance, whatever, lose money on it. With uh, our model, the the advantage to the store is, you know, your customer is doing your inventory for you. So your customer is the one coming in, picking out whatever they want, whether it be jewelry, toys, um, really anything that you can think of that can be done on a 3D printer and pick it out, customize it to uh, whatever they want with their text, uh, color, different various stencils and then hit print and then pay and uh, get on their way. So. And I know you guys had a very exciting visitor here yesterday with President Obama. You created a special piece for him? Yeah. Uh, you want to take this one? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so we basically, I mean, all of us, uh, the, the day before, just sort of designed stuff that was Obama-related. Um, we did lithophanes of him, hold it up to the light, and then the image comes through. And we also made, you know, spinning heart pendants with uh, his name and his family members' names on them. We made little dog tags for his uh, dogs that he has. Um, and uh, I believe we did also just, like, you know, patriotic things and put on a key ring. Arden was able to give it to his staff, so hopefully he has it. Maybe he'll wear some yeah. stuff. Hopefully. Yeah. What amazes me is the turnaround. You found out you had this thing ready to go yesterday and w within like a day's time? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty fast, if you, it's a pretty fast process. If you know CAD programs like SolidWorks, Rhino, uh, you use Maya. I use Maya. So, I mean, if you know any CAD pro programs that can change a 3D model into an SDL file, you just send it, hit it, get it into an SDL file and hit print. And then we send it over to our 3D printers over there and it prints for us. So we can just, we can change, we can swap out the color whenever we want. And as long as we don't have any support, it's okay. Wow, that's just amazing to me that you're able to do this in, in the customization. What kind of stores would use your uh, kiosk? I mean, anything ranging from toy stores, you know, phone stores for phone cases, um, jewelry stores. Uh, I mean, a, a mall in general would, would benefit like tremendously. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, I think the, I mean, it, the possibilities are endless. We can have this really in any consumer environment. Um, I mean, we're soon, not soon, but hopefully in the near future we'll be getting some 3D metal printing, um, ceramic printing. As soon as those technologies go down in price and are practical, um, we're hopefully going to be implementing those. And so, you know, it's pretty exciting. I think definitely the retail market is going to benefit the most from this, but there are definitely a lot more applications for this technology. So what's the next step for Peacemaker? What's the future? So, in July, coming up, we're doing a pilot uh, for a toy store in Butler, and then moving forward to October, we'll be in about five more stores. So, you know, things are going up for Peacemaker, it's just, it's a process, and uh, things have to be done right. Yeah, and then we also have, uh, in the Pittsburgh area, uh, I believe seven Verizon stores mm -hmm. actually want us to come in, develop some customizable phone cases, yeah. and we'll be able to 3D print phone cases for uh, local Verizon stores. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think it is about Pittsburgh and the startups here and, and attracting attention from President Obama? What, what is it about the city? I mean, I think, it's just, uh, I think it's just a great community and, you know, it's, the community is really pushing for a lot of startups and the community is really just getting in on new businesses and supporting those new businesses and really finding out where we can take technology to the next level. So, 
And also, uh, Carnegie Mellon has a great technology program. So, you know, all these startups are a lot of them are Carnegie Mellon grads, and you know that attract people to Pittsburgh as well. And I mean, they're very smart and they work very hard. What are some of your favorite pieces that you've worked on? We have a lot here. So, well, I mean, we can just show you some examples of like successful things. Um, some of these we haven't, like, you know, some of these other interns have done. Uh, but for example, this here, uh, Xavier made this. I don't know if you can. It's a, basically the Pittsburgh skyline, uh, and it's customized as Steel City Robots, and the buildings actually have like robotic faces on them. Um, so that's something very cool, uh, you know, and it's also Pittsburgh. Um, right here, a very successful piece, the Marry Me Heart, <laughs> and we actually designed a connector now that it'll, you can spin it. So, um, yeah, like... You can, yeah, Jewel, why don't you show them that? Yeah, I mean, this is one of my favorite pieces that I worked on. This is the uh, Blink Heart Blank Pendant. And this, with this pendant, you have two boxes that will be able to be fully customized to where you can put text or a stencil in. So right now it says um, the initials of my girlfriend, heart, me, uh, which is pretty cool. But then again, we also have this pendant that can spin around. And how this prints is it prints on the bed as two separate parts, and then it gets taken off, and then you just break this little a little support in there and it'll actually spin and uh, be able to be hung. And um, you know, and, and all of this stuff, you know, it, the stencil of it is blank and you customize it. So it doesn't have to say marry me, it could say I love you, it could say a name. Um, this gyroscope pendant, this spins. So this is all printed in one, one single print, about 20 minutes probably. And when they take it off the bed, it moves and it's ready to go right from there. It so. amazes me how ma that material is so durable. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I mean, we actually even have, if you can kind of see through the light, we even have a support uh, structure in there to where it's semi hollow, but it uses a honeycomb design on the inside to um, really get in and make it a very good structural component. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I could, you know, just from me bending it, it's not. Yeah really doing anything so mm -hmm. and uh, we so we print an ABS plastic which is you know it's it's strong and it can be flexible and they actually use it in some cars mm -hmm. so it's actually one of the better quality plastics that you can 3d print in there's a chess piece that we put through uh, we use in a software mm -hmm. get this cool design on it yeah so. it also has a low melting point which is another plus for uh, 3d printing so very cool. I love these things and the ability to customize them. And we had discussed before that when you go to these amusement parks and places where you can get the little penny imprint yeah. and where you're at and the opportunity is there for you. So, yeah, I mean, uh, similar to the penny imprints, like, you know, you can, if, so this is, uh, this is actually a labeler. So, you know, this can go on a cake and go on food um, and you can say whatever you want on it. Um, so yeah, similar to the penny things, you, you can make it your own. It's a selfie world. Everyone's yeah. into selfies, so this is uh, where we come in. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And and I mentioned also that there's a company I work for mm -hmm. um, is constantly looking for what we call swag and something different you want to give your your customers. And you know you can only give them so many stickers and so many pens, and you need something different to kind of catch their attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're always looking, we're always making new content, always making new stencils. Uh, with this new pilot we're bringing in June, we our, the design team here has been really busy working on new content, new, uh, new stencils. So, I mean, my goal, every pilot is to at least get, you know, seven uh, new categories of stencils into the machines. And uh, hopefully by then, it will we'll expand the content by a lot and really get customization to be the real revolution in 3D printing. Well, thank you both so much for talking with us. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, welcome back and go uh, check out Peacemaker Technologies online at uh, God, I forgot the website. I'm sure it's just Peacemaker Technologies. All right, welcome back, guys. And, uh, go check out more uh, Peacemaker.com and all the great things going on at Alpha Lab Gear. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff that we didn't get a chance to talk to uh, in there, and uh, always cool, cool things coming out of Pittsburgh. 
uh, from especially from Alpha Lab. Uh, so let's get right into a little bit, a little bit of what we're watching. Um, I think most people here are community fans, and of course, uh, getting canceled by NBC after this past season, there was some rumblings about Hulu maybe picking it up, um, and it seems to have fallen on Yahoo, who's finally saved the show after Hulu has passed on it. Um, Hulu's or Yahoo's been making a play for tv for a while and this is going to be i think it's going to be a really big like oh hey yahoo does something i might want to watch at this point yeah i wonder if i mean we're going to see this happening over and over and over again and you would think that if the cable companies and were were worried that they'd they'd be keeping shows like this around or spinning up other cable channels. I'm interested to see where this takes us. Are, are we going to see TV quickly move to companies like Yahoo, Google, Amazon, Netflix, and become less and less dependent on the actual cable provider? I haven't. I've never used Yahoo. Where Where does it? Where, what does Yahoo do as far as commercials and, and that kind of thing? That's a good question, and I can't find anybody that knows. Um, <laughs> I know, like I just teen signed something. Like they did an upfront last year on all the new content they were putting on Yahoo, which was all like made for online kind of thing. And they were mm -hmm. they were looking to launch, um, you know, their own kind of originals. Uh, you know, just like Netflix does, just like Hulu does, uh, and this is they got this to put it up front. Um, I think a lot of people, for whatever the service is, it's gonna get Yahoo a lot of attention. All those people mm -hmm. that were into community did the campaigns. Again, not enough for network TV to keep it afloat, but it's gonna be plenty enough for Yahoo to get some, you know, the hits they want out of the entire thing. Uh, Patrick, I know you got an opinion on. On, on community, and we should probably show the uh, the uh, qualifying uh, picture uh, for that uh, here. Yeah. So explain what we're looking at, especially for the audio <laughs> listeners. Well, okay, so um, back in 2013, um, there was an episode where Troy got to meet LeVar Burton, um, and if you remember this episode well, he was not too pleased by meeting him in terms of he was a little bit afraid of him, and so I had the opportunity to meet LeVar Burton at a comic-con in chicago so i took the opportunity to take that picture and uh i've been proud of it ever since nice um, and it was the, uh, when i had it done um it was one of those situations where you had to pay to have the picture taken obviously for, mm -hmm. for the celebrities and whatnot but uh got a good chuckle out of everybody there even lavar he appreciated it and then, uh you know he talked very fondly of being on community and you know hope to do some more episodes with him at that given point in time so um, it was a nice way to spark up a little conversation with, with them and uh, talking about that show. So awesome. it was always one of my favorite shows. And unfortunately, I, it's always been one of those situations with the community where it's been on the edge of extinction every single year. It seems like the last couple of years. So we finally got the axe. And uh, even though there's sort of a, an outlet for it, you know, I thought it was one of the better shows out there in terms of quality. So but if Yahoo has it, I guess I'll have to go out there and check it out there. I guess my big to... go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I say my biggest thing is like I don't immediately know if I can watch this on my television like I do everything else. Like I don't know right off the bat. Does Yahoo have a Roku channel, an Xbox channel? You know, can I Chromecast it? For instance, I don't think I saw it on the Chromecast app page uh, when we were covering that for even... Google I/O last week. Where do you even go on their website to watch? <laughs> That's that, a, this that. is the question, right? <laughs> like, we don't even know where to start. Maybe, I mean, hopefully they'll have a campaign and say, hey, you know we have video? And you know it's right here? I bet it's like video.yahoo. I mean, it's kind of the way they roll, right? They have something called screen on their front, front homepage. Oh, videos for you. Oh. Okay, so it's called, it's actually screen.yahoo.com. I'm guessing. Must watch SNL, Vivo, Comedy Central. They have categories. Even hmm. when I do a Google search for Yahoo, it comes up with its mail service, financing, news, <laughs> but I don't see video as an option. Like search videos. It, it, yeah, I think they I think they need to do a little little bit of a campaign on this one. 
Because I don't know. And then the other thing that, that worries me about their service is, I, and I think they started to do it with Flickr, you have to use their mail to use the other services. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting. Am I going to have to create a Yahoo email account? Well, Actually, I think we I have, have the one same somewhere. problem with Gmail, don't we? And Google Plus. Yeah, but who doesn't use Google services? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody uses Google services. Mm-hmm. I, think- I, I just I and and I see the same issue with Microsoft. Um. I've actually thought about, hmm, it'd be really nice to use some of the OneDrive features. But, you know, someone needs to create someone needs to create a mail service that all it does is aggregate your mail from other systems and kind of ship you to one place. Do you think um, Yahoo can recover my password from my when I created it back in 1998? They probably, well, no, because they did that cleanup, didn't they? Did they? They actually did, when they re-released some of the Flickr pieces, they actually did a mail cleanup, which actually oh. pushed people back to their service only because they may not have been checking the email, but the, the login was used for, like, Facebook, per se. But no one ever actually went and logged into the Yahoo account, and you actually had to log in. So people were worried that if they cut the cut the mail account off as soon as that mail account became active again someone could claim it and then do password resets on all your other out of facebook services i remember that i remember that well so, so yes so i'm 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 guessing maybe not now the question would be is what's what is the person who took over your mailbox now getting that was yours. <laughs> I, I'm happy to see that uh, Sorgi69 is still an active account on here. I was able to log in. By the way, I think this is a uh, has the same password that I used when, when it was GeoCities. <laughs> like that's how I got into Yahoo was when they bought GeoCities. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's here. They got video. They got some SNL. I know they did the deal with SNL clips a while ago. Vivo is also coming on here. Yeah, Comedy Central, Awesome Animals, iHeartRadio. Uh, so they got something. But again, you know, uh, I, I, you know, can I watch on my TV? Because if I can't get community on, on my, you know, living room TV without like plugging in a laptop, that's ridiculous, right? Um, but I don't know. Good for them. Good. It is somebody else. Oh my. I, what? <laughs> what? I'm getting. I'm getting prompted with one of those like pictogram things or captcha type things have you seen their captcha no it is oh this is going to be an animated gift for this episode i got to record this it is literally animated um characters moving across the screen (laughs) and with an overlay of the captcha they want you to type in that it moves like it's actually extremely hard to read and, and it's going to make people seasick. Like it, it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'll record this and make an animated gif out of this one for you. Man. Um, anyways, uh, and then Chachi's answer to, to anything paid for cable today, apparently. So, um, but no, it's cool. Yeah, and I like that we're at this point where you have, you know, HBO, I think, is a direct competitor. And you have Netflix with their original, Hulu's with their original, Yahoo's with their original. And that's just going to spur more competition and hopefully better programming uh, on, on all the fronts. So, I mean, what happens when, uh, and I think you already see that a little bit now, but what happens when, you know, the next Game of Thrones, the next, uh, you know, whatever big show, uh, the next Dexter is coming from a Netflix instead of this which i think we already kind of have with orange is the new black getting a lot of buzz house of cards getting a lot of buzz uh the arrested development uh reboot get, reboot getting a lot of buzz uh so it's being how it, it you know and all those people paying for cable and say wait now i gotta pay for something else on top of this to go get more the shows i actually want to watch um not everybody i think in a lot of cases that question is going to start coming up and you're going to start seeing the cord shaving a little bit so I, I, well, my wife and I just recently bought a house, and um, we spent the first month without cable, 
And our goal was to not have cable because we use online services for everything in terms of like YouTube, Netflix, Hulu Plus, stuff like that. It's sports. It's sports, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that just kills you because you there's nothing online that you can utilize in terms of watching local sports. And that's the worst part is the fact that when I was living in I was living in Ann Arbor for a little while, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I could still watch, you know, my Steelers, I could still watch my Penguins because I was out of market. And but now that I'm back in Pittsburgh, I can't even watch, you know, I can't watch my Pirates, I can't watch the Penguins and stuff. They like gotta that. do something so, about those blackout rules. That that's ridiculous. <laughs> like even like I would even yeah, potentially it, pay for like can I get a stream of Root Sports? You know? Yeah, that, and that that's the problem. It's root sport. That that's one where I think they could actually make some money if they if they offered a stream mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or a stream only option. And I think everybody that does it currently, what Fox Fox One Sports, right, and ESPN, it's a you have to subscribe to the channel. There's verification in order for you to do it. Mm -hmm. So but I do wonder yeah. is that is that as open ended as like the HBO Go thing? Like, hey, buddy, that has cable. Hey. You know, or do you just like tack on that lower tier so you at least have access, right? Well, and the kicker is that like Verizon now moved that that sports tier. Like Root Sports is not base package. You have to pay mm -hmm. like it, it's a bump above like the the one of the lower level base packages. So they, they know they got yeah even for sports and. Streamers that, that that could stream everything except for sports. Not only do you have to get the base cable package, you have to get bumped up beyond the base base cable. It's cable not package. even the base. It's not even the base package or the bump up. It's actually the second or the second tier up above that. Oh jeez. Um, <laughs> buy. You know. Um, you know. We, we were trying so hard not to have cable, and we had to buy. 283 channels to get root sports which is my local sports channel which we tried antennas we tried everything it's just we're stuck <laughs> it's unfortunate it's unfortunate uh yeah. it'll come it'll come and i think they're getting closer to it i mean a lot more is at least streaming and uh i don't know we'll see i don't know all it needs is the cable co like like the cable companies to piss off espn one of these times and I, I really think they could be ones to say, you know what, we don't need cable, you know, and just walk away, you know. I'm waiting for Google to make a run for it. I'm still, yes. I'm still saying, is, 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 has the NFL agreed for, for Sunday football yet? Oh, that's right. They were working on that deal, weren't they? Yeah. If that happens. That's gonna bust everything up. So. Yeah. So, so if a tech company can get a hold of Sunday football and Monday night football. All bets are off for everything else. I think it'll cause a domino effect. Yes. All right. Um, speaking of uh, online video, yeah. So I had this come up. Uh, Yahoo changed things, or uh, yeah, YouTube changed things again, um, where we get this new kind of. I'm like, I have multiple accounts, right? All of these clients, etc. So I'm going to the drop down and usually you hit video manager. I can go into my videos, do uploads, stuff like that. Um, they've been doing this thing with a kind of front dashboard. So everything's in one place, which has been really nice. Uh, but this time, one of the things was along with the new changes, they actually gave us a video explaining the new changes. And it starts with this guy in the glasses um, who's something or other at YouTube uh, saying, so we're always making YouTube, trying to make YouTube better over the years, right? And sometimes you haven't been very happy about that. He was very frank about it, which was what was nice to see. So they actually do a, hey, this is the stuff that's upcoming uh, with YouTube. And uh, there was some cool stuff in here. Um, like here, the mobile app for creators. We've had a YouTube capture for a while, but now it, it mm -hmm. looks like they're using an app that's going to replace my iMovie. And be able to do a little bit of editing and, and creating so I can go straight up there. Because, you know, it is kind of a pain in the butt. I do like iMovie, but it is a pain in the butt to make it output it. Because I never trust the upload to YouTube. Uh, and with my accounts, it, it, always, it always breaks it up, too, because I have joint accounts. Um, I would just export it on my phone and then upload it through the YouTube Capture app. It would be great to have that all in one place. Uh, with them, and you also get a little sight into uh, some of the production studios that they're doing. Um but no, uh, pretty cool about like YouTube's kind of changing their tune. They've also had um, lately some uh, creator, what they call them, creator um, um, uh, like boot camps going on, uh, where you could go and say, hey, dude, you know, it'll give you a list of tasks to do, 
Uh, unfortunately, I was busy that week, so I couldn't get into it. Um, but you do, t uh, you know, a bunch of tasks that will like help you have a better YouTube channel. And uh, it, so they're teaching like the do's for this. They've had a great uh, speaker series, um, roundtables with a lot of the uh, more successful YouTubers. Um, you know, talking about certain topics, about things that worked and haven't worked for them, dealing with sponsorship. Uh, so really good outreach for YouTube. Um, uh, reaching out to more than just like the like upper one percent that actually makes them money. Uh, so it, it's it's pretty cool that they're they're doing that instead of you know everybody else having to kind of do the community on their own. So especially for you know how much stuff that we have on YouTube that we've been in, especially with these podcasts adapting for YouTube. And I'm actually working on a couple of things. I hope. Um, you know, we'll have a little bit more uh, legs on YouTube than you know, even some of this stuff has, you know, adapting some different formats and everything. Uh, so uh, it, this is something I want to follow pretty closely and uh, hopefully uh, make things a little bit better. So and I think you guys don't deal with YouTube too much uh, with your with your ventures, do you? I do not. Um, other than, I mean, where I work, we have a channel out there for customers. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, aside from that, I mean, I don't have any real input or, or any anything to do with it other than it, that I know that's out there and we put links to it on mobile devices and whatnot. I'm actually interested in what they use to create this video because um, I've actually been looking for some stuff to do a lot of the animations that they're using mm -hmm. in here. So it would be nice if, if some of these little breakout animations that they have are going to be part of their creator app that'd be nice that'd be real nice i'd love to be because like annotations for instance like i'd love for a, a better way to do that editor leaves a little bit to desire to be desired for that that's where you have like a space maybe, maybe text comes up or you have a space that you can make a hot spot and click on it and like they actually you saw squares if you're watching the video here when they showed like the uh i think the youtube and facebook icons and like, presumably they would go to their youtube and facebook uh uh parts so uh, you know that, mm -hmm. that kind of context sensitive thing i mean that's something chilla that's something that i watched alex Lindsay talk about in quick time in uh in, in pod camp one was that concept oh, wow. yes that's how <laughs> long ago that was you know they're showing like oh yeah you can take this brad pitt thing and maybe click on the jacket he has and guess what they're kind of doing on kindle fire hey here's you see the commercial where you click on a thing and there's the actor and here's all the other movies they're in context aware to the video that you're watching you know and mm -hmm. again with this you know the clickable things you know uh you know you see the big you know, unfortunately they're not terribly seamless sometimes there's a big white box that was around this like you know should have been seamless icon that popped up there you know, there it is again, Google Plus. There, there's the part with the animations and the, the clickables, and it, it stays on. You mm -hmm. know, it's not completely smooth. Um, still better than it used to be, for sure. So, But um, awesome. Uh, Chilla, I know you got a couple stories lined up here. Uh, what do you want to touch on? I, I, I want a big shout out, real quick. And I know we, there hasn't been a lot of snark in, in, the, in the episodes recently. I just want to give a big shout out to Microsoft for just completely screwing up everything they've tried to do in the last week. Oh, um, last, <laughs> last week they had a nine hour outage for their cloud services for, for business exchange users. Um, we're not, we're, we don't use that service where I work, but uh, I, and, and they had, they, they really didn't talk about it until days later. Um, and they actually denied that it was actually occurring. Um, can, yesterday, can I, can I, can I add yeah, to that? Sorry, Cause regularly, yeah. Regular, I might know somebody very close that works in the cloud on a Microsoft service, and I hear complaints and downtimes on the regular. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's not it's not all that they claim it to be. Um, yesterday, they updated their calendar app for Windows Phone. Um, yeah, you you can no longer create or edit calendar entries. Um, without it crashing. So you can view your calendar. Um, and then today they released Showtime Anytime, which it's great. Nice nice little add-on to what, what they're doing with HBO to go. But yeah, only for Xbox 360, not That's the weird. Xbox You know what? It, it, <laughs> that's, it's not just them. Uh, WWE Network like just came on a month ago or so on uh, Xbox One, launched on everything else. We're talking yeah. 
we're talking Roku, both PlayStations, um, Xbox 360. Jeez, uh, uh, they just added the Fire TV now. Um, but I think the Fire TV is at least new. Yeah, I mean, this true. is a device that was a Christmas seller last year. I mean, <laughs> exactly. we're, we're beyond halfway to next Christmas. Mm hmm. Yeah. Is Showtime so anytime? I, I know, is Showtime anytime an HBO Go kind of thing where uh, you have to have the cable subscription? Yes, and HBO to Go is still on an Xbox One. Really? Yeah, I mean it's. It, but that is they, always they, HBO Go has always been really weird um, because it takes forever th for them to get on a platform, and then they need to be approved by cable provider. Mm -hmm. But they're. But they're already on the 360 platform. Yeah, yeah, and you would think it would go yeah. right over. Isn't it supposed to be easier mm -hmm. to develop for the Xbox One because it's based on Metroy things? I yeah, thought, one, one, two, I remember hearing recently. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say I thought that after E3, a lot of uh, in the um, the smaller development companies, um, like the indie development companies, when it comes to even the game design. Uh, are struggling with the new Xbox One sort of uh, programming languages, and the PS4 has been a little bit more superior in that regard. So I wonder if these are starting to trickle out to things like this, like the Showtime Anytime sort of situations as well. Yeah, that, I mean, I'm guessing. I don't, I don't know. Or I wonder if Microsoft's trying to do something where they don't want that many content providers until they get their content library built. Because remember, they're doing like a Halo series with mm -hmm. Spielberg. They're doing a lot of their own content, and maybe they don't want competition just yet. I, I don't know. I mean, the CW network has an app, and it works. I, I can't believe that HBO doesn't have a development team that can do what the CW network can do. Hmm. Keep an eye I'm not sure uh, what, what other... What other uh, stories you were looking at uh, right before you guys started today. I, I think I was was reading it right when you were doing the movie minute. Um, Google snapped up Songza. Now, what is Songza do? So Songza is a streaming media, kind of like Pandora, okay. but instead of using "Give me a, a song," and I'm going to give you a playlist that has songs like that, or give me a genre, or, or give me whatever. It's all mood-based. And it's also time-of-day-based. So you can say songs that give me a, a workout for my morning workout, or give me angry music for my horrible commute hmm. to work. It's, all, it, it's more mood-based today than, it, than anything else that I've seen. Like they'll have like um, uh, a Friday night wine tasting at your house <laughs> playlist type thing. Like they have a lot of interesting ones, and then you can I think you can type in some of your own stuff. But I've actually really enjoyed using the service. Um, right now, it's still free. I wonder if this will be kind of an extra thing for Google Music, um, where they'll build in the curated playlist kind of pieces as well as um, maybe getting some of the catalog. The thing I will say about songs is they do have some more popular stuff, but a lot of their stuff is also indie. Mm. Um, so uh, I, I think it's a pretty cool, the, the app's nice. It works well. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a good purchase. It, I, I'll be honest with you. I think it's probably a better purchase than beats. Um, but I'm not sure if, if I, I think the purchase reasons are different for the two companies. Yeah. It's, so, probably, it's probably a tech thing. Yeah. So. Awesome. Uh, and I see this Boston parks will soon let you charge your iPhone from solar powered benches. Yes. That's so awesome. I think this is an awesome idea and it's not just obviously iPads. It's, it's anything that's USB charge mm -hmm. chargeable, but I think the the concept is amazing. I mean, now now in airports you're starting to see more and more power outlets, or even not just a power outlet, but pretty much a USB charging yeah. port. Sheets has them. Um, Sheets has them. Sheets. Mm -hmm. A gas yeah. station. So I, I think it's about time we need more places to charge things. And and you, you probably hear a lot of people complaining about 
well, they have to run electricity. This, this device is solar powered. They're, hey, look, Ma, no wires other than the wire you're using to charge. So, so I think it's a great idea. And I think this is something if companies were smart, would start putting in and selling advertising on the device that's doing the charging. I mean, that, that can be used to pay for it. And the, they're, they're saying these devices cost about 3000 bucks a pop and have come with a, a 25 year guarantee. Hmm. So obviously you have to recoup that $3,000 cost. So I think putting, putting sticker, some kind of sticker removable thing on the device that obviously still works with wherever it's, it's working <coughs> at, um, I think it's a good way to pay for it. And I think, I don't know. I think we need more of these types of devices all over the place. Awesome. That's in Pittsburgh because we never get sunny days, unfortunately. We're a little what? bit overcast most of the while. Well, it's interesting because I have I have sol small solar panels in the back for all of my lights outside. Everything that we have is solar, and I have no problem from when it gets dark to when it gets light in the morning, year round, with my with the the lighting. Now, keeping in mind there there's a couple spots they're LED. Um, there's a remotion, remotion, uh, motion sensor light on our garage. Um, I mean, everything works pretty well, even with the, with the, you're right, the limited amount of sunlight, sunlight we have. Yeah. I just don't know if that's a situation where I, I have the same thing in my house and it works perfectly fine, you know, motion, like that's, but that's LED, that's mm -hmm. only for, you know, maybe, 20 to 30 minutes, if that, per night, because it's only motion sensors, but a cell phone, I don't know the requirement charges in terms of how that's going to be charged up for, you know, in a situation like Boston versus Pittsburgh versus other parts of the United States and mm -hmm. how that's going to affect things. Somebody uh, tweet that article at Bill Peduto, please, because they, oh, well, they will at least consider it at that point, because they are, they are definitely, and you can see how, how, uh, how open they are to stuff uh, over there, so... Um, anyways, uh, on that note, uh, Chile, I don't think there's anything upcoming. We're out of the, well, Microsoft has something coming soon. They have some big announcement, uh, but no, the, we're done with the conferences. We're done. We're done in the conferences and Microsoft made a, an early device, uh, announcement with, with the surface three. So I, mm -hmm. what, what are you hearing from? I know, I know they're talking about, um, the next update coming out and it's no, no longer going to have the, 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 um, threshold components of, yeah. uh, uh, the start button. That's all. The, be the ones I, I've been, hear, the, the ones I've been hearing about, and, and I thought I brushed past an article said there's one, there's a, there is an event, some kind of reveal happening very soon. The, the, the biggest news was, um, you're going to see a little bit of windows nine before the end of the year. There will apparently be separate SKUs. Here we go again. Uh, that will have desktop versus Metro. So you will get a version of Windows 9 that will be all old school desktop, and that's it, versus the weird hodgepodge mix thing that we have right now. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know about that one. <laughs> I think you're going to see R R RT, RT and phone are going to go with Metro only, mm -hmm. and then your your Pro is probably going to have it is. It, the, it, yeah, the and desktop. That's, that, that's more or less what they were saying, uh, at least on the, on the show I was listening to. Um, so... I don't know. I, I think I think it should just be an option because it depends on the device. Maybe like a touchscreen laptop, you'll still get Metro, I guess. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, oh, Windows 8 has been half bad to me lately. <laughs> so, um, anyways, on that note, Patrick Dudders, do it, do this, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, people want to check out more stuff going on with you. Where can they do that? Um, usually if you follow me on Twitter, I usually post things about that. And if I'm, in, you know, if you check out the meetup, you're more than, you're probably going to see most of the information about what we're doing in terms of data visualizations in Pittsburgh. Awesome. And that's the Pittsburgh data, data, data visualization group, visualization group, right? That's correct. Yes. Awesome. Chilla is at Chilla on the tweeters. Now on the tweeters, that's where I'm at. <laughs> And I'm at Sorgatron. You can also follow us, of course, at AwesomeCast, AwesomeCast on Facebook and Google+, where a lot of conversation, a lot of stories 
throughout the week are, are coming up. You can see us here live Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, live at SorgatronMedia.com. Um, also, we're on iTunes, YouTube, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, in audio and video formats, however you'd like it. Uh, people are Chromecasting it. We've been getting pictures of that over the last few months. It's been, it's been awesome. My big head on a big screen. That's what I need right now. Uh, so... And also you can drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Thanks, Missy, for doing our notes and tweets tonight. I saw Scott Harbaugh responded to us. <laughs> so thank you for that. Mike Allen will be back on that hopefully next week. Uh, until then, yes? No, no, Scott, Mike Allen is, did not get us a shout-out from uh, Scott Harbaugh from WPXI. No, no. But, uh, but no, he, he's good. He's good at what he does. He's all right. Uh, thanks to our awesome chat room that's been hopping all night. Uh, Mad Mike, Wheels, Chachi, uh, Brother Sorg, Juggalo John, Bobby FJ Town hanging out in there. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome.